Hi, in this session we're going to take a look at arrays of objects with regard to object-oriented programming with Java. An array itself is a collection of values all of the same data type. And in the past we've seen how primitive arrays can be used to store, for example, the results of one student across many exams, or the results of many students across one exam. We've also seen how two-dimensional arrays might help us to store the results of many students across many exams. But the key here is that all of the values must be of the same data type, which can be quite limiting sometimes. However, what if we need to store the name, student number, and a number of exam results for many students? The difficulties here are the data types of name and student number and results are different. In this instance, name and student number would be a string, and results would be integers or even perhaps doubles. There are, and in addition to this, another problem is that there are many attributes for many students. So how do we encompass all of this and store it best? We can use array of objects. This requires two key steps. The first thing we would do is create an object that will hold the name, student number, and a number of results for one student. And then we make an array of student objects. This would mean that each section in the array would hold the name, student number, and a number of results for one student. And then the array in total would hold the details of many students. So let's take a look at that. An object, first off, the first thing we need is an object. And the object we would need in this case should represent a student. So if we take a look here, say we have string name, string s number for student number. We're going to need an int for result one an int for result 2, an int for result 3, and an int for result 4. Okay, so what we want essentially is to make one box that will hold all of these details. And we do that by creating an object. Later then, what arrays of objects will allow us to do is to take that box and to put it in here into index 0 or 1 or whatever it happens to be of our array of objects. So all of those details will go in that one box. And then later, if I wanted, I could add all of the details of another student into the next box in here in section 1. Okay, so what we're going to do first off is we're going to take a look at how do we make this object. How are we going to create this? Okay, and we do that using our Java code. So here's an example of a class I made earlier. This is the student class where we have private data members at the top for string name, string s number for student number, int result 1, int result 2, int result 3, and int result 4. Okay, then of course we have our constructor student that creates the new strings for name and student number, and then it initializes each of our results to zero, just to give everything a default value. Then, of course, we have getters and setters for everything. So this is your typical instantiable class, okay? It's got set name, set, num set s number, set result one, result two, result three, and result four, and then it's got all of our get methods, which would return those values back out again. So literally, all this does is it stores name, student number, and four results for one student. And that's our object. And essentially what we've done there is we've created this object up here. Okay? Once we've done that then, we can write the code to declare and create the array. And the code to declare and create an array of objects is, for example, if we want, if this is our object, student, okay, is our object up here, all right, 
the code to declare and create that would be student and if we want our array to be called students because it's got many students in it students equals no not equals I need my square brackets the key to your um, the key to our arrays is our square brackets so we have our square brackets equals new student and then again our square brackets um, as with any primitive array we set our size of how many students we want to store so in this instance we'll say 100 so essentially all that's changed here in the past we would have declared an array by saying int the name of the array so the data type the name of the array and then the square brackets is new data type the size of the array and that's what we've done here except our data type instead of being int or double or string is student so we've declared and created an array of student objects okay what we need to do then is supposing we want to store the details of Mary okay and in here into our object we want to put all of Mary's details her name her student number result one result two result three result four we can't just throw them straight into the array of objects we must first put them in an object of their own okay and so the way that we do that is we create a new student object student s equals new student so that makes one student object okay and then we do s dot set name and we would set the name to Mary okay and our set ma set name method is coming from our instantiable class okay where we have our instantiable class here similarly then we would do s dot set s number and in there then we would again just give a student number one two three four we would do s dot set result one maybe to 99 Mary's very good student s dot set result two to 98 s dot set result three to 97 and s dot set result 4 to 96 okay so there we've added all of the contents to our student object s and all that's left to do is to put s into students so we want our s object to go into index 0 of the student array and so to do that we just say students zero equals s and what that does is it takes our s object which contains all of the details that we've put in and it's going to put them all into index zero of our array okay and that will contain all of Mary's details in the first index we could then go on and make another student maybe call them two or s2 and put them into index one and so on and so forth until we've got all of our students stored in this one nice array of students objects okay so the steps are if you want an array of objects first thing you do create an object that will hold all of the details that you want then you create an array of student objects then we populate the object with the details of the student and add the object to the array of student objects okay and if you follow those steps you'll find that it's very straightforward to you and it's probably one of the most efficient ways to store data of this type okay so give some consideration now 
to what code do we require in order to declare and create an array of car objects.